Hello again, this is Samantha with the DevOps Library, Episode 7. We're glad you found yourself here. Today's an exciting day as we're going to be going over Docker. Docker is one of those things that people tend to get a pretty strong opinion about one way or another. But we promise you that if you use Linux at all in your organization, you'll probably end up eventually loving it. Even if you're a Windows shop, you might end up loving it too. Anyway, let's get started. I'm going to assume that most of the people watching this video are familiar with virtualization and spinning up VMs. It doesn't matter what hypervisor you're used to, whether it's Hyper-V, VMware, KVM, and so on. The process is pretty much the same. You create the VM, which has its own totally separate operating system, drivers, libraries, and so on. This process takes at least several minutes, possibly even a half hour or more, depending on the OS install. Then you need to load the applications to the VM, taking even a little bit more time. When you use Docker, you pretty much get to skip this entire process. It's really cool. Docker doesn't create VMs, it uses containers. Containers actually share resources with the host, so there's no overhead for the hypervisor or VMs. While containers do feel like VMs in terms of how isolated they are, spinning a new one up literally finishes in seconds. If you're wondering about application deployment, or how is it different for a container versus a VM, that's another awesome thing about Docker. It's extremely portable. You can create a Docker container on your local workstation, install all the application software and dependencies that you need, then commit the container to the Docker repository. At that point, it's just a quick pull on your production server and your application is completely deployed. Also, if you build something in Docker on Ubuntu, then wander off to a Red Hat server, the container will run exactly the same way. Well, I guess I should just stop talking about it and get started on the actual tutorial. Today, we're going to start out with just a standard Ubuntu 14.04 server with nothing extra installed. Now let's go ahead and install Docker. To get the latest version, run curl ssl https get.docker.com slash ubuntu slash pipe sudo sh. Now let's go ahead and create our first container. Think of the container as a VM. Now type docker run dash i dash t ubuntu slash bin slash bash let's look at the command docker run creates a new container the dash i runs the shell interactively so that when you exit from the shell the container stops the dash t creates a sudo tty or in other words makes it so you see a prompt we're also specifying ubuntu as the image to pull from Docker will pull this image from the Docker repository automatically. Lastly, we specify bin bash so that Docker automatically starts bash on the container. This could easily be a specific service like Apache, for instance. Once Docker finishes downloading the Ubuntu image, you should almost immediately land inside the new Docker container. Looks like our container is finally up. Now we'll just create a quick file on the root, exit from the container shell, and do an ls so that you can see now we have a totally new environment to play around with. Alright, now that we're back on our host, how do we see what containers we currently have set up? Just run docker ps. Notice we don't see the container that we created listed. The reason is because we exited bash, and since that's the only thing the container was running, the container automatically stopped. Go ahead and run docker ps dash a to see all containers, including those that have stopped. There's our container. Do you see it? Now to start it back up, we can run either docker start followed by the long container ID, or we can use the nickname that Docker automatically gave it. Go ahead and do that now. The container is now running, but we have an attached to it. To do so, run docker attach followed by the name of the container. Awesome. Now we're back in. However, one of the best parts of Docker is seeing how fast the new containers come up. So let's go ahead and exit the container one more time. Let's delete our container too. Run docker rm, then the name of the container. Now run docker images. You should see a list of images. These are the images that we've already downloaded and they're basically cached by docker. Let's go ahead and create a brand new container running the same command that we did before. docker run dash i dash t ubuntu slash bin 
slash bash. The container should start almost immediately. It's like having a perfect brand new VM to play around with, but with no waiting time. That's just one tiny part of Docker, though. Let's try one last feature before we wrap up the video. Install Apache on the container. Now click Control P, followed by Control Q. That detaches us from the Docker container without stopping it. While it doesn't matter if it stopped or not for what we're about to do next, it's really a nice trick to know. Now let's run docker ps to get the name of our container. Then run docker commit followed by the container name, then a name for a new image. We'll name ours Apache image. Now run docker images to see our list of images again. You should see Apache image in the list. Lastly, let's do one final command. docker run dash i dash t Apache image slash bin slash bash. This is exactly like the command we've been running to create our Ubuntu containers, but this time our container already has Apache installed. While we've only shown you a couple of Docker's features, we hope that's enough to get you started and that you've seen all the cool things it can do for you. There's so much more that you can do with it actually, and we'll be covering those features soon. As always, thank you so much for watching, and please like our video if you enjoyed it. Please also feel free to leave any questions, or thoughts, or even suggestions in the comments area. Take care for now. Bye bye. The whale gave a mournful cry and lifted its great tail and brought it down, a smashing on this small boat like a gale.